What you're looking at here is one of my Wharfdale E90 loudspeakers. And I've had these since 1976. You're looking at them now in my house here in New Zealand. And they were purchased in the UK. They've been in continuous use ever since. Now, obviously, it would be rather pointless to do a review of these speakers as they've been discontinued now for more years than I care to mention. But they do show up on eBay and one or two places like that every so often. And people are often saying that see these and hear these speakers, how good they think they are. And I must admit, I just love them. They are very efficient, 92 dB for one watt, compared with the modern loudspeaker, which is probably about 86 to 88, something of that order. What that means is, of course, that the efficiency is very high and a few watts go a long way. But equally, they would be at home with a valve amplifier. Even 10 watts will, will fill the room and most valve amplifiers would start at about 10 watts. Some of the more expensive ones may give you 20 or even 30 watts. But um, a speaker like this uh, will certainly provide the volume. Now, not only are these efficient, they're also a very true 8 ohms. You may or may not know that the impedance of a speaker varies with frequency and um, it tends to go up and down and it can get quite low, particularly at high frequencies. Now, if you have an amplifier that will deliver a lot of power into 4 ohms, if you use two 8 ohm speakers in parallel, that will, of course, give you a nominal 4 ohms. But it could actually drop down to less than 1 ohm if the um, impedance varies too greatly and can actually blow up your amplifier. But because the impedance of these never falls below 8 ohms and doesn't rise significantly, you can actually use a pair of these into 4 ohm loads and get horrendous powers. Part of the reason for the high efficiency on the HF side is this horde loaded tweeter and that provides the HF from about 3000 cycles or hertz I should say, showing my age there, up to beyond 22k. Also to help with efficiency we have two 4 inch paper cones and that carries the mid-range. Now the low frequencies are handled by these two 10 inch paper cones. Now they're not literally in parallel although they are sort of. This handles the entire low frequency range but the bottom unit comes in at quite a low frequency of about 150 Hertz so it sort of acts like a sub bass and take it from me you do not need a sub bass with these speakers. Um, I've done tests on them and they are pretty flat down to about 35 hertz. I know you hear all sorts of nonsense about speakers going down to two or three cycles. Well, that's really nonsense. And it's not just the frequency response, it's how much power they will actually handle. Right at the bottom, if I can do this without shaking the camera too much, uh, is a base port. Incidentally, the two bass units are proper loudspeakers. They're not ABRs, or so-called auxiliary bass radiators, which is something that some of the speakers use. Now, this particular version is designed for domestic use, but they did make an industrial version for clubs and for PA applications where high quality is required in a, in a, in a club or something like that. And the only difference is this grill which is removable. Why? I don't know, because it doesn't really, it's completely transparent acoustically. This grill was replaced by a metal grill, which meant that prying fingers couldn't damage any of the units. And in the past, I've used a number of these, both in uh, small cinemas, half a dozen pairs in bingo clubs. And the, the, the sound that comes from the PA system, uh, particularly in voice, is superb. Now, as these speakers are somewhat vintage, the surrounds, which is a PVC surround in this case, not the usual rubber, which by now would have rotted away, the actual resonant frequency of these cones drops every year. 
and the free air resonance of these cones is now 22 hertz. Now when it started off they were about 35 so the actual resonant frequency of the speaker and the low frequency response improves year by year. Now what you're looking at now which is incorrectly and rather ridiculously labelled as low and high you'd think this would be to control the um, low frequency response but ironically it controls the mid-range and puts a, a shelf onto the, um, the frequency response and the high is correctly labelled that it, it can add and these are about dB so that is sort of calibrated in dB fairly accurately. I use this one on minus one simply because this room is fairly bright and that will give me as, as near a flat response as I can actually get when you actually calibrate the thing. But this control is completely useless. I cannot think why you'd want to alter that part of the bandwidth. Um, but there again, it's there and it looks pretty, but completely useless. Now I know what you're all saying. I can hear it from here. When's he gonna play them? Well, I am going to put a, a, a snatch of music on there. How long it will stay on there before YouTube come along and, and cut my legs off through, through playing copyright music, I don't know. But um, I am going to. But when I play them, please bear in mind, you're listening to from the microphone on this camera, which is not wonderful. It's fine for voice, but not good for registering music. And it's got the usual automatic gain control which makes the loud bits quiet and the quiet bits loud which is very nice but ruins music but I'm going to play a, a snatch on it to give you some idea but bear in mind you might be listening to this on a two inch loudspeaker or your laptop in which case it's going to sound like shit but if you are playing it through a decent system it will give you at least a guide but the purpose of this little chat was not to demonstrate the sound because there's no way I can do that. This is actually the circuit diagram of the speaker. It dates back to 1992 when, is, when I actually got this copy and it's a, literally a blueprint and um, it's faded quite well with, with time and gone a bit yellow. And This area shows the attenuators and they are just literally resistive attenuators in the so-called lower which we decided was mid-range and not lower and the upper one here now this is the important business end with the various inductors and capacitors incidentally I've had all of these out and they are very high quality and very large inductors um, the capacitors are all so-called audiophile capacitors and I've checked the values and they are absolutely spot on now this is what I was discussing earlier on about the two base units. Here you have the feed coming in and there is the crossover for the lower base. This one feeds predominantly upper base whereas this one has everything going to it. And the other little bit of the crossover is the mid-range which are literally in series. And the HF unit is a, is a relatively simple C and inductance. So there we go. Well, let's have a listen, shall we? Now, for the music source, I'm using my Onkyo receiver set in the stereo pure audio mode. So there's no control, tone controls or EQ or anything like that. As an audio source, I'm going to use iTunes because that I don't have any CDs or records or anything like that. My whole collection is now on the computer, stored, large, uh, stored largely as Apple lossless files from the CDs, ACC files at 256, where I've purchased them from Apple. Yes, believe it or not, I have actually purchased a couple of tracks. Now to record this, I've put the camera about eight feet from this. This is the right hand channel. Or oh, something I should have mentioned, by the way, you see the um, tweeter is on the right-hand side. Well, the other one is on the left-hand side. And now, if you have a very narrow room, to increase the image a little, you put it so the HF units are on the extreme left and the extreme right. Or you can turn them round 
and it will narrow the image. I forgot to mention about the speakers is the finish of the cabinet. This is a walnut veneer and it's all solid wood. It's really solid and it all helps with the damping. You can put your ear right up to the cabinet here. There's just no vibration whatsoever. The veneers are actually matched. Hard to show on here without moving the camera over to the other speaker but um, Sorry, my tripod's um, scraping a bit. There you are, beautiful piece of timber. Anyway, a couple more tracks, and I'll say thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. No extra charge. If you see me walking down the street, staring at the sky, Come